as well as an athletic trainer and an exercise physiologist. My experience with traction started about 15 years ago when I worked in a sports medicine clinic where many of us had left traction. So we left it soon after we started using it as a modality because it really didn't treat patients the way that we wanted to treat patients, at least when it came to the success. We didn't have too many treatment protocols and it was, again, limited to the therapeutic devices where we didn't have the capability of manipulating them to the point where uh, we could mimic the things that we do with our hands on the extremities. And so we looked for other, other means of treating, especially the, the spine. The technology of today and our ability to use that technology and change some of the treatment protocols has allowed us to become much more successful in how we're treating patients and getting the, the outcomes that we've expected. Uh, similar to what we do in the extremities, we like to pull distraction or long axis traction on joints which give us uh, movement within those specific joints now are capable of doing it with the uh, with the spine. Um, so today's technology, this DTS system, it has a processor in it that allows us to essentially regulate the amount of tension more rapidly, but also regulate the pull patterns that are similar to what we would do with our with our hands. Similar to some of the uh, the technology that we find in high end automobiles, if I may use that analogy, where uh, in a high-end automobile, it essentially has a, a tensiometer in it that regulates uh, and looks at the rapid changes in the suspension systems. Uh, very similar with the Triton DTS system is it responds to that and can regulate properly so it pulls the right amount of tension and even as patients move it will constantly regulate that, uh, that amount of, of tension. Uh, also with that technology in the DTS system uh, it allows us to be more consistent in the pull patterns and so when we do pull traction essentially every time I pull traction on someone it's going to pull exactly the same every single time. We also have the capability of manipulating on how I want to pull that traction. We can change the speed of how quickly it increases the intensity. Uh, we can change the hold pattern, so I can hold for 15 seconds at a higher intensity, I can hold for 20 seconds, I can hold for 30 seconds, and so on. Um, and one of the biggest benefits in, in the Triton DTS system is that capability in changing those hold, hold patterns and changing those pull patterns. It doesn't necessarily take away what we do with our hands, but it's a modality in addition to what we can do as manual therapists. So uh, with the mechanical means, it's allowing us to treat patients in the spine, again, similar to how we would like to treat them with, uh, with the extremities. Table systems have also become much more comfortable. We used to have to treat patients by uh, attaching them to many different devices and the strapping systems were uncomfortable. They had to be adjusted uh, quite often. And then to get people onto a table, the patients simply weren't as comfortable. And that's one of the key factors in treating patients and improving our outcomes is making patients more comfortable. If they're not comfortable, it doesn't allow us to get to the point where the therapy is actually going to be beneficial. Some of the older devices were also just attached to a treatment plinth, so the table itself didn't move. So we had to support the uh, one half of the body against the table, and then we would pull on the other half of the body. So what we would have to do is actually pull the patients across the table, and pulling patients across the table created what's called a, a coefficient of friction, which was higher than what we're doing with today's devices. So we can actually use less resistance when we pull people with today's devices because it has a lower coefficient of friction. In other words, it allows us to pull them with much greater ease. Um, the other thing that we find with today's devices is, again, being much more comfortable, but actually allowing us to produce the type of traction that is, in fact, what we tried to accomplish even 15 years ago, and that's something as simple as intermittent traction. When we release tension on someone who is being pulled across a table or a table that doesn't have a spring-loaded system, which we'll look at here in a moment, um, it didn't give us true intermittent traction. So if we were trying to produce true intermittent traction, it actually wasn't occurring. So the other thing that we're finding with this table in particular with the spring-loaded system um, 
It has a very, very low coefficient of friction, so it's much easier to pull the person. So the table separates. We don't actually have to pull the patient across the table, but with that regulated spring-loaded system, during intermittent traction, when we go from a higher intensity to a lower intensity, that lower intensity with the spring-loaded table system also allows that response so we get movement back with the patient. And that's been a key factor when we're looking at true decompression therapy is it's best accomplished with an intermittent traction. And so that decompression, as you all know, is creating that negative intradiscal pressure, which is done with that intermittent traction protocol. So even, even accomplishing the standard intermittent traction protocol has been much more successful simply based on just changing the table, even if we weren't to change the device. But now we've got the best of both worlds where we can manipulate the actual tension, the pull patterns, and they're going to be mirrored by the responses that we get from the, from the table. So first and foremost, making patients more comfortable and allowing them to obtain uh, that relaxation, that's where we get the therapeutic intervention. That's where we're much more successful, especially when it comes to what we'd like to accomplish with the spine is we need to reduce what's called motor neuron excitability, or we need to reduce their activation of the muscles that are giving them that guarding, that guarding system. Again, when we look at what we tried to accomplish 14 or 15 years ago with that type of technology, if a patient wasn't comfortable, there's an automatic guarding response, and that guarding response is typically muscle spasm. And if there's muscle spasm in the spine, it doesn't allow us to actually separate the vertebrae, which is what we're really trying to accomplish, similar, again, to what we'd like to do in other, other parts of the other parts of the body. So if they weren't comfortable right from the beginning when we were actually belting their systems and then getting them onto the table, then it was going to reduce the effectiveness of the, of the treatment. When we look at the literature and the history of 10, 15, 20, even 30 or 40 years ago, we were capable of producing some of the responses that we can do today, but not consistently, especially people with pain. Historically, treatment of traction with the acute population has been a contraindication for a couple of reasons. One is because we would pull them at too high intensities just simply based on the older protocols that we had. Um, and then the second reason is they were so uncomfortable as a result of being in pain during those acute pain processes, we get muscle spasm, which gives us that guarding effect. And then also, based on those protocols, we would want to move those tissues. We would want to separate vertebrae when we did traction but what we know today is that we have therapeutic benefit by pulling people at these much, much lower intensities, therefore looking at the, the changes in some of our treatment protocols and the ability to treat people. Again, the, the technology that gives us this unlimited capacity to manipulate the parameters and the protocols in here also means it can be a progressive therapeutic device. So we can use it from the acute phases and treat the acute phases similar to what we would do with the other protocols and therapeutic interventions and we can progress it from the acute phase into the subacute and all through the phases of, of tissue healing and response by manipulating the parameters. Again, that's something that we didn't have the capacity to do even 10 years ago, even five years ago. And so with the Triton DTS system and the power that we have is now having the capability of treating patients throughout the entire spectrum of all the way from an acute phase injury through the chronic phase injury. The Triton DTS system, it really does expand the opportunity to treat a different patient population that we may not have treated before. Getting people into our office sooner and allowing us to treat them sooner, we know that as clinicians we get a better therapeutic outcome from treating people sooner. The table itself it has a, a, a more rigid system to it that uh, gives us uh, better tension to the person. And so when we, can, when we can put people into a device more securely, it also means that the amount of tension necessary to pull people and to accomplish our traction also becomes less. So we're able to use lower intensities while accomplishing the same things and actually accomplishing even more because we were not capable of doing that um, in history.